Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's an undeniable fact. It's our creed as Americans. Today I want to concentrate on happiness. Who could use a little bit more happiness in their life? However, I want to share with you first, it's not only about you. Maybe about spreading happiness to others as well. And we're going to do this together. There'll be three mantras, and the first one is... Be kind. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. Well, maybe a little. Depends on who you're talking to. But for the most part, it's rather easy. The hard part is not correcting that person when you would have done something different. Not everybody's entitled to our opinion. <laughs> I want to share a story with you about an event that happened a few years ago. I was driving down Colonial, right near I-4, that section of six lanes of traffic. I'm in traffic and I see this homeless man, about 60 years old, and his shopping cart is dumped over and he's working furiously to pick things up and to secure them on the side of the road. Here's what I didn't see. Traffic stopping. People are just weaving, he's weaving in and out of cars. I was fuming, I'm like, this isn't safe. I did the only thing I could do. I stopped my Jeep in one of the lanes, I figured that guarantees me one stop lane, and I got out. And I'm like this, stop, stop. No, you, stop. And I make sure that the guy secures his items and walks over to the other side of the road. I joined him and I asked him, are you okay? Are you hurt? He was standing, so I thought maybe it was a good sign, but I wasn't sure. Are you okay? Kind of looking at me with a blank look, but I ask, are you okay? He turns to me in the most pugnacious voice and he says, I'm not gonna be a bother. I picked up my things. What do you want from me? I just wanted to know if you were okay. I crossed back across the road, thankfully didn't get hit. And I went on my way. I imagine this man of about 60 years old probably grew up in a normal home, probably with two parents considering his age, went to school, got a job, some sort of education, and maybe even a family. But through a series of unkind events, this is where he ended up. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. You never know the battles that somebody is dealing with. Say a kind word. Our next mantra will be be flexible. For those of you who know me, I like being on time. And in fact, if you want to be late, you can drive separate. <laughs> I pride myself on being on time, and I'm usually early. It's one of the things I like about Toastmasters. We start on time, and we usually end on time. However, not everybody shares my same love of being on time. <laughs> Is it annoying? Yeah. But you learn to be flexible. I have a friend. We've been friends for 30 years. And most of the time, she is late. In fact, I'm meeting her today after here. <laughs> Sometimes it just might be five minutes. Another time it might be a half an hour. And she usually calls and says, hey, I'm running behind. I'm like, okay problem because normally we meet at a shopping area or a, a breakfast or lunch place or something like that I'm not that put out what do you think should happen when she arrives should I remind her you were late you're stealing time from me that's how I feel in a business environment when you're late you're stealing time from somebody else but no I decide to be flexible and you know what happens we have a great afternoon. We have laughs, we talk, we, we make plans for the future. I mean, we're just having a great time. Had I approached the day with my own perception of being on time and how she broke a rule, it's a big rule. 
we wouldn't have had that wonderful experience. Be flexible. The last one is be yourself. This is actually a story about somebody who's very, very close to me. My husband. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Paul grew up Seventh-day Adventist. And if you don't know what that means, it means he's a very loving, caring, generous man of God. These are qualities I certainly appreciate as a wife. Here's the flip side to that. That boy ain't got no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> On New Year's Eve of last year, we decided we wanted to go out. We didn't really know what it looked like. We were looking online and seeing who's doing what. We don't do really, really big crowds, and we wanted to find something that might be a happy medium. We found the Enzion. They were having some sort of party till midnight, God forbid. I'm usually in bed by nine. <laughs> But we decided to do it. It was going to be fun. I knew there was going to be a dance floor. I knew there was going to be a DJ. There was going to be hand hors d'oeuvres passed around. It just sounded like a lot of fun. We arrive, dress very nicely. The music's going. People are kind of dancing because we got there a little early. And we sit down next to a table of a bunch of 20-something-year-olds. Then the unthinkable happens. One of the men at the table next to us stands up and he starts dancing. It looked a little something like this. It was atrocious. <laughs> but here's what happened after that. Paul walks up to him and says, I want to take dance lessons from you. <laughs> and from that moment on, Paul danced all night long. In fact, I sat down for a few songs, and he just kept going. <laughs> and here's what happened on the way home. He said, I had the best time of my life tonight. Be yourself. Was he pulling out all kinds of awesome dance moves? No. <laughs> but was he that bad? Not really. He had a good time, and I was grateful to be a part of that evening with him. Be yourself. You can find happiness anywhere, whether it's for yourself or somebody else, by being kind, being flexible, and being yourself. I wish you a lot of happiness.